How is everybody today? Hope everyone is doing well. It, um, February 26th, can you believe it's almost the end of the month? Um, again, as always, a time just flies. Um, if you're here and you're on camera, or not on camera, I'm on camera, but if you're here, um, drop your name in the comment or chat box or say hello, and we'll get started here in just a minute as we let a few of the people um, come in. Hi, Laverne. Good to see ya. Well, see your name anyway. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Vanessa. Great. People are coming in. Hi, Gavin. Anne, Gavin. Sorry. You're all the way from Maryland. Welcome. Let's see a bunch of people from the East Coast. Hope you're warm and doing great. First question I have for you as you're, as you're popping in and saying hello is, what did you learn about yourself doing the project or the assignment from last week by going to your fabrics or your quilts and even your fabrics and looking at them and finding out who you are, what your style is, what colors you use, what do you have, what did you learn about yourself? What did that tell you, if anything? If it didn't tell you anything, that's fine too, because sometimes it doesn't. Um, if, As I was looking at mine, I looked all through my quilts, and what I noticed more than anything is how much I had changed my style and the fabrics that I used. Uh, I had probably, um, maybe 60, 40, 60 of, of the warm colors. I, you know, looking at fall, I, I tend to lean in that direction, summer and fall colors. But um, I, I did have a lot of uh, starting to add a lot more blues and greens and that kind of thing into my, my quilts. And uh, I like Cin I like Cindy's answer. I just saw it. I, I should review my fabrics more often to appreciate what I have. Exactly. That's what it did for me, too, as I was going through my fabrics. I'm thinking, oh, I've got some really nice stuff here. I need to be using it. So I like that. Um, so, all right. And uh, so blue and green people. I wanted to tell you, last week I asked what your favorite colors were and what you didn't like. And I kind of did a tally to find out where we were and we fit right in with the um, experts that make you know find this out or make decisions about what the favorite color is and sure enough blue is right at the top and it is it seems to be uh, everybody's favorite color so blue is at the top green was close behind and then it fell into um, reds and purples so those were the most liked and the least liked color, which surprised me because it's a new color that I'm, that I'm starting to use more often is orange. And so orange won that contest. And so I looked at the questions that came in. So the first thing that I, I really wanna do is I wanna tackle some of the questions that came up on the chat box and on the YouTube uh, version of this. And so th there's questions that can be answered or comments that can be made there too. Someone asked if it was harder to choose fabrics when the theme fabric was old. And the answer is no, because the dyes and, and the colors uh, that we have don't really change. Some of the patterns and that type of things, uh, that type of thing uh, does, but you can take an old fabric and, and I believe I pulled out some vintage fab, what I call vintage now, from the 90s and early 2000s. And if you have those fabrics in there, that shouldn't be a problem pulling fabrics, you know, that are contemporary or that you've bought within the last few years that um, shouldn't, shouldn't work. So that should not be a problem. And then 
the theme fabric that I used, it's fresh cut from Michael Miller Eat Sleep Garden Collection. And it is difficult to find because I think it came out in late 2019 or 2020. So I don't know if you could add to that. There are some stores that have some of the um, additional fabrics that go with it. So you might be able to find that. And someone asked about background fabrics, using those instead of just white. Yes, we're gonna get into a lot of that kind of stuff. And some of this, these questions that you're asking now, we've got a few weeks ahead of us. And so as we choose fabrics for the blocks that we're gonna making, that we're gonna be making, and that type of thing, we're gonna answer some of those questions. So some of this will take a little bit of patience, I'll cover some of that stuff as you ask it as well. But yes, we will talk about using background fabrics that aren't just white or black uh, or gray as the new color. Combining prints, yes, we'll get into that as, as well. And then the question was, do we choose a pattern first or we, do we choose the fabric first? And my answer is yes, because it depends. It depends on, um, what we're doing and our purpose behind that. We'll talk about that through the blocks, through a lot of different things of when you look at the pattern first, when you look at the fabric first. And um, how do I uh, communicate intention through color? We're gonna touch on that today. That's part of the lesson. And someone was asking, what size of squares are we gonna be making in this quilt? And the answer is, that's up to you. Because the book has, I think, four or five different options in there. And as you're working through and finding blocks, because you can also make several different blocks using the same uh, theme. You know, if we're going to be talking uh, let's say analogous um, fabrics, and we're gonna choose for that. You could do several blocks analogous so that, you know, that kind of ties through without your quilt. It depends on the size that you wanna make. Uh, we're gonna be making uh, a number of blocks for a small lap. And so I'm gonna be probably adding blocks to mine, and I'm creating this along with you. So what does the finished quilt look like? Can, can I see it? The answer is, well, no, because it's not, it's not finished. We're working on it together. Um, and proportion of color and all that, yes, we're gonna get to those things as we, as we move along. So let's jump right into this. And we're gonna be talking about temperature. And fabrics can be divided into warm colors and cool colors. Warm colors uh, are those that are, are, you know, reds and oranges, pinks, um, yellows. Those are considered warm colors. The, the cool colors are the blues, the greens, the purples, those. Um, so let's, let's stop and think for just a minute when we talk about warm. What makes you feel warm? You can answer in the chat. Um, hot chocolate makes me feel warm. Um, fire, the sun. I, I think of warm colors when, I, when I'm thinking of love. We just had Valentine's Day. What's the colors that, that fill up Valentine's Day? Um, that type of thing. So those reds, those oranges, those yellows, those, those pinks. And so as you're looking at your fabrics, you know, start working at dividing those. And then the second question is, what makes you feel cool? And I think of the ocean, the sky, the water, uh, plants. When I'm in the middle of a forest, it's cooler because the sun doesn't filtrate all the way through the tree limbs. And so that moss that, that grows where the sun doesn't shine very well. So it's wet after rain. Those are cool things for me. So the greens, the blues, uh, that type of those colors. And I want to talk now a little bit about the warm and the cool and how we can begin that transition um, process. And first of all, let's take a look at some of the fabrics. And I'm going to drop you down to my table. And I made um, two blocks. 
just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about in terms of warm and cool. I've used a number of the fabrics that you have in your starter kit and then I went to my stash and found a few more because the more for me more is better so you know I had to find a, a few more to fit in with that so I also put very not very much but just a little bit of transition colors in here and we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more of how you can use both warm and cool in a quilt because we are and your starter kit had both the warm and the cool colors in it and um, so if you look at this block for just a moment and walk over here to this stripe you're gonna see that I have moved, there's a red line in here. Then you see just a hint of it right here, and we call that transitioning. So we can begin that process of taking that into the warm by adding some type of fabric that carries the colors that we were using and then moving into the other temperature. If you look over here, I've done that very slightly. The one print, it's a cave print that was in your starter kit, if you have that, has green in it. And then um, this has purple in the center of those flowers. I don't know how well you can see that on camera. They're not, these are not highly transitional because I was really working at showing you the, the warm and the cool. So we have warm and cool fabrics so when we have both of those in a fabric like this, because you have, the background is cool colors. The leaves are the cool colors, but then the flowers are popping with that oranges, yellows, and reds. And here I think I can, I can share with you so that you understand this part of the warm and cool flowers. When you're putting them in a quilt, the warm colors, the warm fabrics pop forward and when you look at the fabric the first thing you see is that warmth coming through because warmth um, those oranges those reds those pinks those yellows um, come forward in your eyesight then the blues and the greens recede into the background and if you were to walk outside on a spring day or even as spring is moving into summer into a grove of trees and stand there and look at that. I, I think it's the best version, at least for me, it, it, it always has been, is that you look at those trees and the ones that you're closest to are the brightest in green. They're like this background color. They're bright, they're vivid, they're chartreuse, they're those new, those new buds and leaves. But the further you go away, it starts to change. It gets a little darker, a little bit more blue. You get some of that emerald green and you get those deep greens into the background. And so you can almost see how you know, that, that transitioning works by looking at a grove of trees or looking at um, an area of flowers. That's another thing that, that really affects me is that when I love roses and in, in the home that we, that we owned in Northern California before when we lived here, I had, you know, I think I, the last count I had 48 roses in that yard. But the one thing that I always noticed about those roses and that it was very clear to me, this warm and cool and transitioning, was that the flowers needed to be the showcase. They needed to be the bright, happy, you know, something there. And what held them all together was the leaves of the rose bush. So those greens, those cool colors lifted up and made those you know, the colors of the roses or any flower, it doesn't matter what flower you have, really pop and shine. Right now in Northern California, the hillsides are covered with mustard plants and green because we had a little bit of rain um, last month. And so we have these green hillsides and the yellow mustard just makes the hillsides turn into this wonderful chartreuse. And in the middle of that are poppies. And those poppies just 
absolutely glow as you're driving by because they have that background of the cool color and uh, you know like you know this orange flower it really really pops it and so we're talking transition in you had um, I believe this blue in your starter pack I found one a little bit darker a little bit different and then I found a, a very dark one and so now I want I have these blues in my quilt but I want to move into and work at other colors so I found this you know a piece of scrap in my um, stash so I've got some green there, but now I want to continue that movement because I, I do want to add some warm to this. So then in our starter kit was this color and in there, there are blue and teal, which works in with this. So I can start that transitioning process and to introduce teal into this. So then I can move into a color like that but now I want to go to warm colors so I can keep that going by getting a little bit brighter and now all of a sudden in this fabric I can see that that yellow is more yellow um, when I when I put this fabric with it because that chartreuse really makes that pop and I can start to move into something like this and then that moving into something like this and now I can go even back to the blues and the purples and get that whole transition feel and once you put all that transitioning through now the, all of those fabrics work together in this uh, palette that you might pick and so when it when we're talking a transitioning fabric we're talking about a fabric that has a certain amount of color and then it has a little bit of a color so that you can add that to it this one for example you know has those purples and um, you know if you were going to transition these two into something else um, you can you can do both warm and cool and um, change how that how that looks in the quilt so transitioning fabrics one more example of that and so we have purple on screen it looks extremely blue but in front of me this is very purple and it has little tiny blue dots in it then this fabric i would call a transition fabric because it has the lavender the light areas of purple back there uh, moving into where I can add those pinks that chartreuse color again or that came in our um, packet this stripe transitions us um, as well because in here I have reds and I have a little bit of, of pink going on in that or this cafe which has both warm and cool in it and if I wanted to make this a more warm quilt I would use more of the the pinks the oranges that yellow that's in the middle of that flower and move it that way or if I wanted it to go more cool I would stick with the the blues and stuff so is a um, I just looked up and saw Anne's question is a transition fabric like a focus fabric well yes it could be doesn't have to be for me a transition fabric is a fabric that that moves us to, from one place to another and i chose the um fabric our focus fabric primarily because it had both warm and cool and i could work with that and as we make our blocks uh, you know this also brings us a little bit of of a challenge because it is very vibrant and but I wanted to work with that because if you really look in here we're also going to get into a little bit of what we talked about last time shades and tints and tones and remember that a tint is those fabrics or colors that have had white added to them so we get into this yellow we get into this um, 
color right here. We get into these brighter pinks. Those are considered tints because white has been added to them. Think pastel, if you will, the, the more white that's added. And then uh, a tone has had gray added to it. So you look in here in these violets and blues and the greens down here and some of these. These have had gray added to them. And somebody was asking last week, can you put those dull gray fabrics together with brights or pastels? And this fabric, well, definitely tells you, yes, you can. And then shade is when black has been added to the colors. So there, you know, we've got pieces of black in here, little spots. This is a green that has had a, you know a lot of black added to it and next week when we get to the color wheel I'll show you a little bit more about how that works and so we've got the deep reds that have had black added to that we've got these deep um, purples and again on camera it shows up blue this is a teal background but as I'm looking at the camera I see it um, as a um, as blue, but it's it's a beautiful teal. So when we're transitioning, think for example again, uh, chartreuse and emerald, uh, magenta and plum. I, I kind of grabbed those those two. And when we're talking background fabrics, somebody brought that question up. You know, ter in terms of background, what can you what can you use? I'm working on a Jen Kingwell quilt, and it has a background fabrics. And I looked at the other part of this. This is um, Dreamcatcher, and I made a block. It was for a class, and taught them. And as you can see, I use both warm and cool, but this tends to lean a little bit more to the warm side. And I used gray as my background. So I leaned more to the, the gray blues and the clear whites as I was working on this. I taught it again, didn't finish the center, but this time I used a very white background. And again, this time I wanted to talk about the warm and the cool. So the outside is cool, the center is the warm. And when I look at this part of the block, the first thing I see is that warmth right in the center. And then as it moves out, it supports it where here, in this one, I mixed it all up. And so there's not one place that your eye falls to, it moves around. But again, when I look at the, the screen, the reds and the yellows and the pinks pop a little bit more. And you know, think about, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about thinking about placement so that you can get, um, you know, where the colors add up and make your quilt, you know, exciting and interesting in terms of that. So uh, next week we're going to be doing that. So browns work well with warm colors if you're going to stick with warm. The gray down background fabrics, the gray works really well with cool. And again, that's going to be working with the color wheel and the three-in-one tool next week. You can divide your fabrics into warms and, and cools and um, with, an, with any hue um, or color that you have in your fabric. So I, you know, one of the things that I would encourage you to do this week is the same thing that I, that I did, and that is to create a warm block and a cool block. So I chose the churn dash. I wanted a lot of different fabrics in it. So I created that. And let me find those two blocks back for a moment here. And so I, I put, you know, one inch, this is a nine inch block. I put one inch squares in the center of my, you know, churn dash 
um, as it goes all the way around so I could use up as many fabrics as I possibly you know could in that and the same thing with the cool fabrics so divide you know whatever fabrics you thought you were going to use into a warm batch and a cool batch and that would um, serve serve you well as we move into next week but I want to share with you one other way that I look at fabrics a little bit and this is what is your purpose um, really for instead of looking at my hands uh, instead of uh, you know thinking in terms of just fat whatever fabrics whatever colors that you have your theme is an what's your purpose for making the quilt are you making it for a grandchild are you making it for a friend is it a charity quilt is it something that you want for your living room for your bedroom what is it that you're that you're creating it for and one of those is seasonal and I like this I, idea of seasonal because we do change our quilts out um, if you're like some of us we have a lot of quilts and it's how many quilts can you have and I don't know the answer to that question um, I I have a lot and so we'd like to change our quilts out and so I think seasonal and I was working for a publishing company and, and we had to take a class for you know what we wear when we were presenting and we were teaching and doing different things as part of the job I was an instructor uh, to teach educational material to groups so we took a class it was when um, you know that the color of the clothing that you wore what are you are you a spring a summer a winter or fall and I learned a lot through that things that I didn't know uh, it made some of the art stuff that I was doing at the time make more sense to me uh, when you thought of that because there is an emotional and a physical side to color I, I believe and when you walk into a room what does it make you feel and if you if you were to go into um, say a paint store and look at their brochures color combinations that they put together in a room you'll find bedrooms will have those soft tones um, quiet colors you know cool or warm feelings depending on where in the country that it's coming from magazines do the same you know do a lot of the same kinds of things as well and uh, so seasons let's talk about spring when you think spring I think of those crocuses popping through the snow I think of daffodils I think of you know it's the world is coming to life but it's it's soft and it eases us into that spring there's lots of you know sunshine and light and it makes you want to get outside and and go out there and be in that color um, those colors then there's summer and as you move from spring to summer think again of that tree going from those bright greens of that newness of the of the buds of the the leaves on the trees into sunshine and energy and light we we have vacations and we get to go places and we don't have to go to school so those are those pure colors where we don't add any white we don't add any black we just have the color and we can combine those pure colors together and get those rich deep summer colors and then as we move from summer into autumn we start seeing the browns a little bit more of the black added to that there the trees are are turning colors and I, fall is is for me just my favorite season of the year the colors are so rich and so in depth and you get those crisp deep rich colors it's it makes you want to snuggle and come in and get cozy and all of that so those browns and and deep colors and you're adding some tone to that some grays those kinds of things and then autumn once the leaves have fallen it's very stark and it's cold there's not a lot of color it's foggy it's gray there's it 
and when that snow falls, it's so quiet and there's a calmness about it, a restfulness. And so you think of the season and it brings about thoughts. And, it, you know, it's always good to hear your thoughts because you guys bring in a lot of different ideas and things that that I don't think of. And, and I appreciate that. So if if you have a feeling or an emotion that one of those brings up, please add it to the chat box because it's really it's really a good um, idea to to share your your thoughts and to to gather from others too because it adds a different perspective to that. I'm gonna drop you back down. I went back to my paint chips and I pulled out not all of them, but I pulled out my my spring. Um, here it looks like a basket full of eggs. I don't have all the colors here. I just pulled things that look springy to me. And then I went into those those pure colors um, of summer. And so it gets a, you know, it, it takes it on, it gets a little brighter, a little bit more pure into those summer things. And then you start adding that black and grays into the fall and you get that that real warmth there and I don't know why but I I, pull, I just did a whole bunch of winter uh, I'm not sure you know that those crisp clean clear um, you know wrap me up in, in these blankets during this season so spring summer fall and winter Another, if you've got your stack of fabrics that you're thinking of, and can you mix grays and all of that together? And the answer is yes. And if you look at that, you can see that it works. It, it, it works. It's, it's all there. I'm going to move that out of the way. So we think about it. We do respond differently, both physically and emotionally, to color. And, you know, we asked last week, what is your favorite? And um, most of us say blue. So we like that calming effect that, that blue can bring to us um, because that's what blue does. It's, it brings some, it has energy, but yet it, it, it's calming. And different patterns, uh, when we're talking, so what fabrics do we put with a pattern? I pulled out a few things. And I'm looking at uh, these, these blocks or a pattern of a quilt. So the question came, do you pick the pattern first or do you pick the fabric first? Sometimes a fabric evokes an emotion in me that makes me want to make a quilt for for that or I have a reason for making it. I want a new fall quilt or I want to give a gift. Um, baby quilts, those soft colors come into come into play even though right now the very bright colors are um, kind of a favorite for baby quilts which is kind of fun um, since I like the bright but you know and you think girl the soft pinks and the warm and the all cuddly and you think of little boys you think of blue and again that energy the greens that that color there's there's a lot more energy and we think of that when we think girl versus boy so girls are warm and boys are cool i don't know um, but sometimes we, we think in terms of that, and sometimes it's not so much our thinking, but it's what we've always, you know, accepted as the way it is. Um, so I'm going to show you a, a few um, different ideas. So when you see a pattern like this, what, you know, I grade all of these down. I didn't necessarily want you to see what fabrics were used and what colors. But you're, we're going to talk value next week, and you definitely can see some value in here, and you'll see this again as we talk about that. But what does that invoke in you? What feeling, what colors would you create this quilt to be? Same thing with this one. Um, what would you what would you make that into? Would you use vintage fabrics? Would you use 30s? Would you use modern, you know, floral, um, geometric? You know, what would you what would you put with that? And here's this quilt. Again, 
what would you make this out of? Could you make it out of many different kinds of fabrics or ideas or things? Then there's this one. It, the fabric sort of gives it away what it was made out of. Um, but could you change that up? And then there's this one. So this, this, and this one were all vintage and reproduction fabrics that were used to make these quilts. So you can get a little bit of an idea of what they look like. But then I found these same patterns in other books, exactly the same pattern or the same block, but they were made um, in very different fabrics. This one was extremely bright and happy. I would say this is probably the happiest quilt that I've ever seen because the, it, they were so vibrant. And you don't see that necessarily here, but it this this is a, what we would call a vintage or a, you know an older pattern, but yet it was unbelievable how cool it looked in all those bright fabrics. This one, it was called the the quilt was called Child's Play. And it was done in three different colorways. One was all pastels, which it was soft and lovely, and it would have made a great a quilt for a child's bed. Um, it was also made in vintage fabrics. So it was very warm, uh, very calming, very cuddly. And then it was also made in brights with modern fabrics and geometrics, and it was just as stunning there. So any of these, if I, if I, one of these patterns just struck a chord within me, then I would choose the pattern first. This one is, um, I, I bought it a few years back and it was in a primitive, all the fabrics were um, vintage or reproduction fabrics and they had this quilt done in the reproduction fabrics and I've kind of moved away from those even though I still very much like them but then they took all the brightest of all their their reproduction fabrics and created this quilt which I really liked and I saw lots of possibilities and teaching opportunities in all the different blocks and so I ended up getting the pattern um, for me the fabrics made more of a difference and I could look beyond what what it was made out of and the um, colors on here. My um, son is a fisherman and gonna make this for his son um, because he you know likes those fish and this one was fun and playful and would fit in his room really nice. So for me it was the pattern of the fish and I do like the way they they worked with the colors and I will find colors that may fit into that because you know you're using the blue and the warm again and you want those fish to stand out so thus that you know these are these are reds and pinks and a little bit of yellow in there so that the fish pop out and of course that those black faces really does make it this one makes me think modern so the pattern would lead me toward the fabric but it doesn't have to um, because I think this would work pretty much with any um, fabric and then you know invoke a feeling I wanted something spring and so I picked up this Jen Kingwell pattern happy birds and for me it's very much late spring headed into summer with the colors that she had here but I know that this is a quilt that I would hang for spring or I would bring out and that newness you know winter is behind and we're working on that so transition uh, fabrics what are we going to you know do we do we find the fabric first and sometimes if a fabric you know speaks to me or draws me in and it's a vintage fabric then I would probably try to find a pattern that fits that I love into that I could use that fabric for and find other fabrics that would go along with it sometimes if I am making a quilt for a purpose for example the fish 
then for me it's it's the pattern first and then I'm going to go find the fabrics that fit into the theme or thought of that. So when we're looking at you know starting with the the fabrics and things now I want you to go back because I know many of you have chosen your fabrics um, or at least have somewhat of a palette together. Go ahead and divide those into warms and cool. And then you don't know the pattern. You don't know the blocks. And I've done that purposely because I want you to really work with your fabric and find out what you have and, and why you're using the fabrics that you are so that when we get to pattern, when we get to the block, we, you can make some, you know, some very um, good decisions that, that speaks to you and your style and your voice. And that's, that's really what I want because what I like is not necessarily what you like. And if I were to choose your fabrics for you, you may say, oh, I really like that. But you go home and you start making it and you go, but it's not what I want. And so I want you to be able to look at fabric, see what it does, uh, what it what it conjures up for you and why you love what you love so that when each quilt that you make, you're going to be making it into your style for your needs and you're the one that's going to pick the, the, the fabrics, the patterns, the, the, the whole the whole ball game. It's not my quilt, it's your quilt. And it's going to be really exciting to see the differences of what you come up with with your quilts at the end. And I really hope that as you're dividing your fabrics into warm and cool and this week, and I'd, I'd like you to do that, divide them into that, and then choose some of your favorite colors or those colors that you discovered last week that you use a lot of and for me, I, I fall into that summer fall range and I kind of stick there. I don't have much pastel in my work and I don't have a whole lot of that, that winter um, in, my, in you know, my body of work. So finding those colors. So take a blue, take a green, take a purple, and if you're really crazy, go for orange. And then choose fabrics from your stash that that represent spring that represent summer fall or winter and see if you can divide those out and come up with are you a spring are you a summer are you a fall or are you a winter quilter and it's not so much about the clothes we wear because i i don't think we can do that because i wear certain colors of clothing for different reasons than I would in terms of making a quilt. It Those two don't work together so well as, as far as I'm concerned. So um, this the homework for this week then is warm and cool. What's your balance? And it doesn't have to be equal. It's if you want more blue in your quilt and you have lots more cool colors than you do warm colors, that's okay. Just divide it and see what you have and look at that kind of tells you a little bit more about who you are. And then if you can take, you know, any colors that you want or many, um, you know, take purple, take yellow, take orange, take green, whatever color, and see if you can find those fabrics for spring, summer, fall, and winter in your, your stash and divide those out and that's going to give you a little bit more idea of who you are and where you come from. So that would be for next week. And I am very excited about continuing to move through this process. And again, what was really helpful for me last week was when you asked the questions in the um, chat box. And for those of you who are on YouTube and watching this, um, the questions and the comments that you made there work really well. And for those of you who are members of TQS and can go into the forum, you know, add your pictures, you know, your piles of warm and cool, and I will show those on screen 
so that we can all appreciate that, even for those of us who may or may not be on the the forum or um, part of the quilt show. And that way we can learn from each other because your ideas of fabrics and who, you know, how you go about choosing them. So, it, and even if you don't have much of a stash, whatever stash you have is going to tell you something about yourself. And then when you go shopping or you're adding to your stash, it's going to be pretty wonderful because you're going to have a better idea of how to fill in your stash and what you need in that stash. And so that there aren't those fabrics that stay there for years and you keep thinking, I should use that, but I haven't found a reason to. And sometimes we buy fabric um, and we don't have a place or something to put it into. So go ahead. Um, rust and light greens are those warm. Sometimes they are, and it depends on the other fabrics that you put it with, and that's part of what we're going to be talking about next week. Um, and that question, I just happened to look up and see that at the end. And so I'll try to, again, answer questions that you have in the chat box next week. I will answer them on the YouTube for, that's where, and I'll put those um, questions and comments into um, the forum for those who can come there and again if just your stack of fabrics and things will be really helpful and your separation of your seasons uh, put those pictures up I'll share them with everybody as the weeks progress and we'll get there you guys have a great week enjoy whatever it is that's that's up for you and I will see you next Saturday